baby. Hello, my cat loving friends. Rita and I have been trying to figure out food labels for our cats, and I have a dog, and it's very confusing. There's meat and meat byproduct and meat meal, and then grains are bad, no grains are good. We're very confused. So we found the expert. We have Susan Fixton with us from truthaboutpetfood.com. She is going to unravel this for us and help us to make better choices for our animals. We will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. I am your co-host, Linda Hall, here with my ever gorgeous ride or die, BFF, Rita Rymers. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, you flatter me. You're about the only I, one who I, I does. I keep trying, I keep trying. I have to so. say, when we were working for Richard Simmons, that's when I became a label reader for our You food, and me right? both. Have you ever read yes. the label for pet food? And is it really representative of what's truly in there i don't think so that's why Susan's well here. and i'll tell you the only advice i was given up until we started into this business was meat has to be the first ingredient yeah there definitely. are a lot of other ingredients so let's get susan in here to decipher some of this for us <laughs> susan thank Welcome. you so much for joining <laughs> us well thank you for having me oh you you made our day rita said there's got to be somebody out there who's not tied to a pet food company that yeah. can talk to us about this we had and someone I else Googled... on who was tied to a company so i'm not sure i yes. trust everything she said yeah she was the vet for a celeb cat that has a, a line and you know she you just don't know because she's got a little skin in the game right so yes so we want to talk to you help us decipher all of this please well the first thing is like you were saying reading the ingredients pet owners should know that every ingredient in a pet food or treat has its own unique definition so when it says chicken on the label. That is not the same definition of the chicken in our food. Okay. That is pet food chicken. Um, pet food chicken, per their definition, is allowed to be just chicken skin. It can be flesh, meat, or it could be um, bones. Like they, they reference them in the industry as chicken frames. I'm so smiling watching your cat. Is, <laughs> is removed off of the skeletal skeleton of, of the chicken. It's just little bitty pieces. So it's not but, human grade. It, and, and the bones, absolutely not, are not human grade. So every single ingredient in pet food has its own very unique definition. Also, the, the legal definitions of pet food ingredients are not required to be human edible. So our food, when we see chicken on a label, it is USDA inspected and passed. Okay. It, any, mm -hmm. any meat in the U.S. has to pass inspection for human consumption. Pet food does not hold that same requirement. It can be oh. condemned chicken. It can be chicken that never was inspected. And pet owners are not told what kind of chicken you got in there. Is it just chicken skin? Is it just chicken bones? Is it condemned? So meat is the first ingredient doesn't necessarily guarantee anything. So I see you just blew out the one thing I thought I knew. <laughs> yeah, that is that is correct. It, it because meat, you know, our brains go to meat. So backing up another step, it's labeled as cat food, dog food, <laughs> but it is not food. Most of them, it abides by no food regulations. Pet, most pet foods are feed, just like cattle feed, chicken feed, okay? It's feed, and it abides by feed regulations, which is a much lower standard. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how they can get in those condemned animal carcasses, because it's feed. It's not food. 
um, manufacturing standards are lessened for food than they are for feed. Everything, everything is a lesser standard. So well, it should be called that, cat and dog feed, not food. It, it should. Yeah. And the, the exceptions to that is if you see on the pet food label, ignore website claims because websites can and do, not all of them, but can and do lie to consumers. Right. right. Uh, so you want to look on the label. And if it says the two words, human grade, mm -hmm. that means that pet food is was manufactured with the same exact ingredients that is in human food per the same manufacturing standards. Okay, so those okay. are the ones to trust. Those are the ones that are food. Okay, that hurt okay. me. Okay, yes, yes. Okay. Not necessarily the ones to trust, though. Is and, that what you're saying? I mean, it, it, you, you still got to ask questions mm -hmm. with yeah. The, everything for our pets i do it for myself too you, you have to become a private detective for, yes. for everything especially for them because so many bad things are yes. allowed the fda directly allows pet food to source meats from diseased animals oh. and animals that have died other than by slaughter what was that story you were telling us about Hurricane Florence? Yeah, Hurricane yeah. Florence uh, 2017, I believe, came in and flooded a lot of North and South Carolina. And in that part of the country, there are quite a few factory farms, mm -hmm. livestock right. farms, production areas, and 3 million poultry, turkeys and uh, chicken, and I think 100,000 hogs drowned in their barns okay, from the floods Horrible. when the waters went down bulldozers came in and bulldozed all of those bloated decomposing animal carcasses Ugh. and they were sent to rendering made into pet food and sold to pet owners with absolutely no disclosure oh that's disgusting this there, there are more than three billion, with a B, of just condemned animal carcasses. These are animals that made it all the way to slaughter, but they were ill, diseased in some manner. Mm -hmm. So the USDA condemned them, would not allow them to go into human food. All of those animals, that's three billion a year, oh, okay? Gosh. All of those animals, those condemned carcasses are allowed to be disposed of into pet food with no warning or disclosure to the consumer. Oh. That is not allowed in a human grade pet food. Um, any food that contains more than 3% meat, except for pet food, right. um, is, is under USDA jurisdiction. Pet food is under FDA jurisdiction. But when uh, the requirements, legal requirements for a human grade pet food is that they're made in a human food facility. So USDA is on site at these facilities where these human grade pet foods are made. Uh -huh. And they won't let a condemned, rejected, any anything like that, even in the parking lot. It, it Wonderful. is not allowed. So they're very strict uh, on things like that. So that will not happen in um, human grade pet foods. But we, in, and I can't say that in every feed grade pet food, that's, you know, this nasty, horrible stuff is in there. Right. I can't say that. But there's no way um, to know. But we don't know. That's yeah. right. There, there's, there's no, no guarantee because they don't disclose that. Uh, I have, when whenever you request um, a change for the FDA, and this is all, this all falls on FDA. FDA is who allows all of this. It's basically our pets are waste disposals. Um, because imagine a billion with a B condemned animal carcasses going to landfill. Okay, that, that's a, a biological environmental risk. Mm -hmm. 
with all these decomposing carcasses, they do have to dispose of them somehow, but it shouldn't be in our pet food. No, no with no disclosure. So I've, I have a request in, it's been about a year now. Um, the FDA is required to respond within 120 days. And, and they did saying, we still need more time. And now it's been about a year, but I've asked them and backed up legally why they should do this, that products be labeled as feed, cat feed, dog yeah. feed, yes. feed grade chicken okay. on in the ingredient list. It, yes. it would say feed grade chicken if it's feed grade, because that <laughs> at least gives consumers, you know, an idea that, wait a minute, it, it's feed, it's not food. And the only products yes. that would be able to use the term cat food, dog food would be human grade products. That so they actually meet the legal requirements of food. So I, I, I pick say all those labels, but I was going to say they still say they're investigating. Do you think they're dragging their heels, or are they taking it seriously? Oh, they always drag their heels. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and they'll tell me no. But I, I, I'm real proud of myself. I'm not an attorney, but um, I dug and dug and dug through law um, to base my argument with them. So it'll be interesting um, to see whenever they respond, but um, we'll see. That is, if anyone wants to read it, you can go to regulations.gov and then in the search box, type in Association for Truth in Pet Food. That's our consumer association. Great, and awesome. that, that will come up. So Great. I'm real proud of, of that argument. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Well, and yeah, at least give us because the choice, if right? Use I mean, this waste, at least declare it. At least tell pet owners. Please. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, and then let pet owners make the decision. Exactly. Yes. So it's scary, though, Linda, because, like, you know, people are always asking us what foods are good. And even Jackson Galaxy says the same thing we say get the cheapest you can afford with meat as the first ingredient but that's not guaranteeing anything but we don't know where that meat came from so you were telling us about a lawsuit that has been filed and there has been no decision so we can't say this happened or not but we can say what has been alleged um with the um animal food well you, you all asked me if it's ever possible for dog and cat to be in a dog yes. or cat food. Yes. And we do have absolute evidence of that now. There Ugh. was a, a consumer suing Rachel Ray Nutrish pet food. And I really don't remember if it was a dog food or a cat food, to be honest with you. But her attorneys did a full DNA analysis. This was their just six, just six ingredients plus the supplements. Mm -hmm. So this brand was touted as minimal ingredients. Uh -huh. That's yeah, I've why seen they those. did a full DNA analysis on it. And it contained dog DNA. I do believe it was a dog food. A dog That's food just pathetic. That's contained, pathetic. It contained horse. I mean, all kind of. Oh. It even contained zebra fish. I hate to ask, where do they get oh these? Goodness. Where do they get the animals? Well, actually, we learned because we looked it up, like how in the world zebrafish and um, research is a lot of research is done on zebrafish. So when this lab that's doing the research on the zebrafish are done with the zebrafish, they get rendered. Into Rather pet. than pitch it, they can turn it into food. How does the dog and cat? DNA get in there. A rendered dog euthanized animal. Yeah. Dog from the vet's office. Why I, oh, this is why from I the don't. Shelters. shelters? Yeah. That's God, why that's I don't leave my horrible. babies at the vet when they've been yeah. euthanized. They're all buried in my mm -hmm. backyard. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Because I've heard that before and I didn't know if it was true or not, but I wasn't going to take time, a chance. To my knowledge, we ever had official evidence actual yeah. proof yeah. yeah i had read that a while back um there was a, a cat food that was talking about this and i just like i was like that can't be true that can't be true but there's it, a there's it, a story um your listeners can can do a google search for what's cooking 
C-O-O-K-I-N. And the journalist, I think he was with a Baltimore newspaper. The journalist's last name is, Van, uh, maybe his name is Van Smith. Gosh, okay. I, I'll, I'll try to find it and oh, I can yeah. send it to you. But the name of the article, it's 20, 30 years old. He was at a baseball game and heard people talking uh, and they worked for a rendering company, he got to talking to him and say, can I ride along with you? And so he wrote this very damning story about the rendering industry and pictures of barrels of dead dogs. Oh my God. Be rendered. Yeah, the images, I'll warn anybody, if you look that up, the images in that post are- You can't unsee it. You know what you're getting there for, yeah. Well, well, on that happy note, let's take a quick break and yeah. we'll get back to talking about everything you need to worry about with pet food. And we're back on 19 Cats and Counting, my lovely co-host and best friend, Linda Hall. And Susan was telling us from uh, truthaboutpetfood.com, what really is in our pet's food? We don't know 100%. Yeah, What's in they there? Don't even have to tell us. So we were yeah. just talking about the dog DNA in some of the cat food, dog foods, and I'm sure if it's in the dog food, it's in the cat. It's in the cat food, and who Absolutely. knows what else? Yeah. Who knows what else? You know what are they doing with the roadkill and everything else? I mean, Rita was the first one to alert me to the term the four D's, and when and I, what's that? And when she told me, I, I, uh, no, dying, disease, disabled, and or the other, but yeah, animals that can be used in food. And then not even something that we would normally, I mean, it's, it's bad enough to say there's sick chicken in there, but to put dog and cat in there is, oh my goodness. It's I horrifying. It's it. horrifying. So other than looking for human grade, is that is that the one thing that we should be paying attention to? Is there more we can do? I mean, other than making our own, I have 12 cats, Susan. I have 15. <laughs> I have five and, and we cook. I uh, picked up ingredients today, this morning at the grocery for homemade pet food. Um, okay. We do cook and, and then I feed them. Uh, it's homemade cooked and I feed them uh, commercial raw and commercial cooked. Okay. Um, all wet foods, both cats yeah. and dogs. Yeah. So yes. uh, it it's not rocket science. It, mm -hmm. It'll be it'll scare you to no it's end. Safe. You think that your animals are just gonna take one bite and drop. Yeah, I'm not gonna get enough taurine in. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. get that was yeah. Part that's of our, the big fear. Yes, that was part of our textbook for behavior school. Was all the mm -hmm. micronutrients and macronutrients yeah. that cats need in their diet. And well, I'm like, not a chemist. A recipe, and I can. Okay. I can assure you there are good recipes out there. I can send you a link. Awesome. I've seen that very that much. Yes, please. With, with oh, everyone. Sorry. Yes, um, please. Um, but I mean, food to me, when you prepare it yourself for one, if you can source organic or humanely raised, right. That's tremendous. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and instead of this long list of all these supplements, they're going to get all the nutrients they need from food. Okay. So their body immediately goes, cool. I, I know what to do with that. It's you, real you know, food. And instead of taking in supplements, often synthetic supplements that the body's right. struggling, what the world am I supposed is. to do with this? Exactly. You know? So when it's actual food and it's not hard, you just follow a good recipe um, you can freeze it, you know, thaw it out as you need it. We make a huge batch at one time. But when I first started doing this, I, I, pro I have a vet friend, many vet friends, but the vet friend at the time that was helping me through this, I'd, I'd make up a batch and then everybody loved it. And, and then I'd call her going, are you sure they're okay? Are they going to die? It's I understand, but no end. But then when you think <laughs> out in nature, before we had all these supplements and all that, and there was cat food, dog food, they were eating food, you know, without yeah. any supplements. Things whatever. that we would consider nasty, like a mouse, you know, yeah. that you're like, well, oh, that's diseased. Right? So why is it such a big deal that we have to add these things? And now well, we're saying it's really not. To date, my cooking has never killed anybody. Well, all right. <laughs> okay. And pet that. food can't make like the same it. claim. 
Yeah. True. And my cats are so picky too, Susan. Do you find that your cats are enjoying your cooking, your cooked food more than they were the canned food? Well, I'm big on, especially with the cats, but I do it with the dogs too, on constantly rotating foods. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience, and I've got one that's a real pain, not this one, um, <laughs> she'll eat whatever you put in front of her, she'll right. eat. Um, but I, you know, sometimes I feed them raw, sometimes I feed them cooked, sometimes it's homemade. I like to vary the protein, vary the fat, sure. you know, when I'm cooking so that mm -hmm. they don't get stuck. Cats, in, to me, tend to get stuck. Um, the cats eat, go back to food based on taste and texture of the food. Okay. Dogs are more of the smell. <laughs> and the palatants, the things that are put in commercial foods. Now, this is more like on a kibble or in big pet feeds, canned products. They're almost addictive. Those flavorings, palatants that they put in there. And, and if a cat gets stuck, it's really hard to get them unstuck. Right. So, and, and one of ours is she'll just turn her nose up even sometimes homemade yeah i have some of but those. we we kind of you know tough love with her we've we've gotten brave enough to to do tough love and go okay kid it's not offered again until the next meal and and an hour later she's going i'm sorry i, I didn't <laughs> feed me I please oh <laughs> my missy does that she turns up her nose and then i don't give her anything else or i'll try two or three different things i'll come back in the room an hour later and she's eating it yes yeah. exactly. she's yeah. just well, waiting for something, something better better exactly we, we pick it up and it's it's not offered again until the next uh, i feed twice go. a day yeah. so um yeah, we tried um smalls and my uh, cats I have, it. especially I have an FIV kitty. And so I worry about his nutrition more than anybody, more than my own, worry, more than I worry about my own self. And um, so we tried smalls and some of them took to it. Some of them had a really hard time. Mine hated some of them, it. Every one yeah, of them. Rita, Rita got the sample thing. And there's said, still some in the freezer. Touch it. Is there? Send mm -hmm. it to me. Um, <laughs> I tried um, putting the bowl in a sink with hot water to kind of warm it, to get the scent up. Uh, I'm try I tried mixing some of it. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't, you know. But yeah, it's not stinky because it doesn't have all the artificial crap, right? Yeah. And that's a, that's in itself is a billion dollar a year industry, just the flavorings. So um, they, they work real hard and then brands try to get something that they, the animal, you know, almost becomes addictive. I was just going to ask, is that, that's yeah. what the cats are addictive to, to those yeah. flavorings. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we, we've that's, said that about temptations to owners to change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Temptations, um, cat treats. I, I don't even buy kitty them. crack. We call it kitty crack. I don't even buy them. Like, <laughs> yeah. Smalls, um, pet food, unfortunately just received investment was purchased part of mm. um by mars and by general mills no, that's not good awful. that's not good it's going to change now that's not good i want to try cooking time. for my cats um i've tried some of the expensive you know human great food and my cats are just so darn picky but now i know why they're addicted to the yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah yeah if somebody yeah. handed you a salad and a piece of cheesecake where are you going <laughs> i'm going for the cheesecake what about dry food susan is it is it necessary I, I, there's not dry food in my house uh, the only reason it comes in the house is if i'm doing a post and i need pictures nobody eats dry and have not for years i'm, and, I'm not it's dry foods are an ultra processed food mm -hmm. right so there's a lot of science linking ultra processed foods to disease, multiple diseases uh, in humans. And this is research from all over the years. Even if it's uh, grain free? World. Yeah. It's yeah. just the process. Ultra processed. Okay. Wow. There's a post on my website. I think the title of it is, is your pet food processed or ultra processed? And the difference, the ultra processing is something <laughs> 
really, really significant that um, you you don't you don't want um, ultra processed. Sure. Okay, so kibble, a dry food falls into that category okay. of ultra processed. Okay, so uh, uh, a processed, a minimally processed food is is much healthier, and and this is scientifically proven is less of a attachment to health conditions, health issues, health concerns than ultra processed. Yeah, I believe yeah. that. We have some clients that say that their cats won't eat wet food. And I had a couple of cats that wouldn't, but again, back to the flavorings. And once you taper well, them off that. If you, and this is what's really sad of what, what, where they have taken our pets. If you took a, a chicken wing, a raw chicken wing, and laid it down in front of your cats. Would they eat it? Probably not. We had Isn't this conversation. That horrible. We were having a session, and I said, you know, we're doing it wrong. Cats in nature, if you watch them, they have to hunt for their food, and we just hand them stuff. And I said, it's not like God drops dead birds and mice in front of them. And Rita said they, they wouldn't, wouldn't eat, it eat it if he did. And I was like, but that's good their point. natural food. You know, and most cats now, mind you, we give them chicken wings and chicken legs raw, right? Because it's good for them to chew, it helps clean their teeth, right? You know, getting that meat off the bone. Um, but you know, the thought that, and and many dogs, when we adopted um, Gracie, which is my little terrier mix, came from a shelter. You know, and they had her on a kibble and they wanted to send me home with some. And I went, I'll just throw it in the garbage. You might as well keep it. And I immediately sat, a, you know, our first meal was a bowl of real food. And she looks at it and looks at me like, you're that? wanting to eat this? She had no idea what it was. Sure. And it's, it's that tough. is just. That's why I said my cats food. wouldn't eat it. They wouldn't know yeah. it was food. So, yeah. It's, it's so they're, they're so for generations have been programmed to something very unnatural, very yeah, unnatural. Yeah. My yeah. cats won't even, I, I have a little mouse problem. My cats won't even eat, they won't eat the mice. They'll, they'll chase it around and poor mouse has a heart attack and then they don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and the raw food thing, so I've been like, I'm going to do this, but I'm scared of things like salmonella. So I'm very excited yes. that you said you cook it and it's that I think I can try. But she um, said, but, but Susan, but you're I such a gift of raw. Yeah. yeah. So and it's not, you... a, it's not a concern? No. No. Okay. I mean, so I, mean, I could get the chicken wings it's... from the grocery store Yeah. and give them, I know you need to do it raw because cooked the bones splinter too much. That's, that's why. That's yes, right. They have yes. to be the bendy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, under supervision, don't just throw it down and walk away. What do you do? Always How do you do it? Supervision. Yeah. Um, just watch but, us. Yeah, show. mine get get raw, and the dogs get a a, a bigger beef bone. Uh -huh. uh, with dogs, you want a bone that's bigger than their head. Okay? okay. So with a large breed dog, you might need to at the grocer get a big knuckle bone. If it's got a great deal of fat on it cut some of that fat off mm -hmm. but they'll lay and chew and chew and chew and it it it's cleaning their teeth yeah and again and uncooked, yes. enjoying the daylights out of it yes and All uncooked right. for those for the dogs yes. uncooked. Oh, yes. Absolutely. yes yes Raw bones. All right. and i have a chihuahua with a small head so yeah. i'm not too worried well, i'm thinking about <laughs> my parents dogs because they when yes. we have steak they save the big bone only three of their dogs get it because the other two are too little but it's cooked so it's better yeah. if they do raw then yeah, yeah. Take it out and get and, it And wrong. like a, a shank, beef shank bone. Mm -hmm. they, they sell them in the grocery. People make stock, soup stock. Yeah, my mom they does that. cook them for a long time and make soup stock. Uh, I do that too. I, I will cook bones for a long time and make bone broth. And then you can add the bone broth to yeah, that's really food, good for them. Um, uh, or just give them the bone broth. Very, very healthy. Very healthy. Awesome. It sounds like this might actually not be more expensive than buying. Uh, that food. was my next question. I know people are going to ask us, what's the cost of here? <laughs> yes. Um, from a human grade pet food to homemade, you're 
you're a lot less expensive making it really? a lot less expensive. Um, at, you're, at least, you're making Chewy cry right now. I was just <laughs> thinking <laughs> that because my <laughs> Chewy bill and Ooh. PetSmart, they're both sobbing right now because <laughs> my Chewy bill is higher than my mortgage. Every well, month. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to stop ordering. I get, um, I do wet food twice a day, but I do dry because I have some grazers, right? And it's grain-free dry food, holistic, but no dry food is really good for them. So I guess I'm not going to order it's, anymore. It's an ultra processed food. I'm going to have some upset kitties. How do I transition them off of that? Uh, and that that's a tough one. It, it took me a year when I first really? started switching my animals away from kibble. And this has been many, many years ago, you know, through my evolution, I did it too. So, but oh, yeah. you evolve, the more you yes. learn, you make those little shifts as sure. you go along. Um, and this cat we no longer have, Tarzan was his name. Oh, I love that name. He was a wild man. Um, <laughs> and he was like, and I left food out for him all the time and he could eat whenever he wanted. And, you know, did fine with that. He was the only cat at, at, at the time when he got to graze, but he was like, I'm not eating this other stuff. You, <laughs> you have me confused. And I would take some of it and put it in the blender and grind it up to a powder. And then because remember that, that taste is what tells a cat if I'm going to eat it or not. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have the texture part of it, but we did have the taste. And I sprinkled it on a wet food. Oh, and, just to wean them off then, of it. Yes. And and, nice. and then like would at his normal meal time, gave him, went to meal times instead of free feeding. And then at his normal meal time, I would give him the new food, the wet food with the dry sprinkled on it. And if he didn't eat, I'd wait about an hour before <laughs> I would give him anything. And then I still didn't give him a full meal so that he was a little hungry. I gotcha. And next time we tried again and again. And I, I mean, we went round and round, I, but this is what finally worked. Um, was this i'm watching your dog I walk back that. i know i was too, too. I was shaking that <laughs> little crazy. tiny and i was like giggling yes. yeah well i knew with that i know that dry food is dehydrating and then in doing some research for that live that we mentioned where we played meat or not meat um <laughs> i found that they cook it to blah blah degrees well now wait a second we all know that raw broccoli has more nutrients than our cooked broccoli we That's know right. that cooking loses nutrients if they're zapping this at some nuclear high temperature, is there anything nutritional left in it? I think they That's add right. it back, don't they? Yeah. Don't they? they have to add, add it back, it back artificially. Is, is that right, yeah. Susan? Well, that's why you see all of those supplements in there mm -hmm. is because they cook the daylights out of this stuff. Some yeah. of those ingredients, I've got a post on that too. I have no idea what the name of it is. Um, but some of the ingredients are cooked four times. Oh my Lord. Yeah. So imagine if, if you made, there's two meatloaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and they, look identical. yeah, mom, um, they look identical, but one was made from grass fed beef, mm -hmm. all fresh spices, everything, you know, just pristine. The other meatloaf, the person dug around in their freezer and found this, um, you know, hamburger that's been in there for a year and it's, you know, covered in all the white, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Uh, they the found freezer burned and everything. We yeah. found that in the back um, of our freezer, but they, I throw it away. <laughs> they found spices in the cabinet that have been there for years and years. Mm -hmm. And then they cooked it a little bit extra long, but it doesn't matter because we got lots of gravy. And they You're both right. look alike. Yeah, which one would you eat? Differences <laughs> between the, and the nutritional differences are significant as well too. But yeah, maybe Missy's right to turn up her nose at all. Them. I have a, a going on eighteen. Yeah. She's she's deciding she doesn't like anything. <laughs> she's she's becoming really fussy. So our natural dehydrated treats like minnows, that, minnows. Those things gross me out. They should not look at me, Susan. It bothers me. <laughs> but I. I, I don't touch them in the bag. I open the thing and kind of sprinkle them like salt and pretend they're not there. 
<laughs> but is is that a good treat or is dehydrating it taking well, too much moisture out? Again, no, that's fine. Okay. But again, it's not like universal. Right. It depends on the manufacturer, what their processing safety standards, blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, you've got to ask a lot of questions yes. of, of your whoever you buy your food. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got to ask, you know, what is that? Pres it, are there any preservatives? You What's the label about? say on that, Linda? Yeah. I'll have to I'm look at have that. Well, it's okay. Balls on. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are in it's all the time. Just, Contacts. Yes. <laughs> uh, two crazy calories. Yes. I know single the ing single ingredient cat treat ingredients, minnows. Okay. That's it. So it's okay. <laughs> yes. Well, the the problem could be is that if the supplier of the minnows, okay, so did this man treat manufacturer receive the minnows already dehydrated? Here would be a question. Um, and if they did, the supplier could add a preservative that does not have to be declared on the treat label because the treat manufacturer didn't add it. Oh, now that's really complicated and confusing. Yeah. Ugh. So you're better off to do your own. Well, I and am going to do thinking. some research. Get a dehydrator and yeah, well, all you find a recipe. Ask them, you know, all you got to do is ask them. Yeah. Did, did you do the dehydrating of these minnows? Are they received fresh? Are they received dehydrated? And if they're received dehydrated, did the supplier add a preservative okay yes well i yeah. was about to put in what another cat thought? food order sorry chewy i think i'm <laughs> gonna look for a recipe instead <laughs> yes so do you have recipes on your website no i don't okay. but i can okay. i can send you some some links to trusted sources thank we you very much that, but linda you yeah. and i can try them out and that's yeah. what i was thinking yes we'll we'll put our alex ross cat aprons on and we have cooking. 27 we have a 27 cat test bed right there and exactly <laughs> yes that's why companies like to send us things to review 27 cats i mean we are our own testing facilities right <laughs> but you know what you linda now it, now it doesn't matter now it doesn't matter if they all like it because we just found out be cooking our it own so good anyway exactly yeah yeah it's, we'll start uh, with bone broth. That'll be a real simple thing to do. Yes. Okay. Go buy go buy a big package of chicken wings, and just throw them in a throw them in a slow cooker. I've let them cook oh, for I have a slow cooker. hours. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you can add some vegetables in there if you want because they're going to cook down. Yeah, the they need meat a little rough. Probably fall off of the bone. You can leave the meat in in the broth. Right, take yeah. out all the bone, take out the skin, you can take out the vegetables if it's all for cats. Um, mm -hmm. But you'd be surprised. They taste like meat because they've been cooking. Because that's what it is. Yeah. Well, exactly. And when I, I make a roast and cook it all day, well, the carrots taste a little, a little bit beefy. Of, <laughs> a little bit yeah. of vegetables yeah. won't hurt. It'll give them a little roughage, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As long as it's not corn or something. Yes. Oh, my what gosh. And chicken wings are add? cheap. Oh, yeah. Right? What vegetables do you add? I'm thinking... Uh, whatever you want you know okay. you can you can uh, i like like spinach and mm -hmm. you know uh, uh spinach is great kale things like that so you're almost They're like making a, a soup. hard to get out later but um yeah i do i bought spinach today that will be included in both the cat nice. foods and Amazing. and the dog food so you're making a soup just without seasoning no salt and pepper and all that it's just Ooh. a broth and it's not a, it, yeah it's really just a like broth. A, yeah. no seasoning in it yeah. whatsoever. yes yes a great Seasoning deal bad. of water you know over right chocolate. you can uh dr karen becker has oh we love karen yeah she's got you can look up her broth mm -hmm. okay okay great yeah. awesome yeah. yes we love karen becker yeah she's been on our show I yeah. just, I feel, I don't know. I'm having an issue. I'm going to need a few minutes to digest before we go, because I grow my own catnip. I grow my own cat grass on the bed. I don't let my cats get anything. And I've been apparently feeding them a lot of really awful I know, stuff. But you know what? It, they intentionally, this is intentional. Yeah. Hid from you. 
Yes. Okay? Yes. You don't want to go down. I got on this path because a pet food killed my dog. <gasps> oh my gosh. I went to my dog. I used to run a boarding and training facility and my dog, who was my best friend, I, I taught obedience classes with her. She was my example, my demo dog. And she was so cool. We were, you know, that soulmate, that special. I get it. And almost overnight, she gets a tumor on her pelvic bone. And my vet back then um, knew more about pet food than most vets do today. And he said, Susan, it's bone cancer. You've got about two weeks to tell her goodbye. And it is caused from the chemical preservative and the food. That chemical preservative oh. was a thoxiquin. And it's still used. What's it, it called? Be, I've, I've seen that. Thoxiquin, E-T-H-O-Q. Q it's okay. We can find it's a, a tin. It's a tin. <laughs> Q-U-I-N. Linda's yes. great at going down rabbit holes. Oh my I am. Oh, I am. Um, it's I'm still like used in pet food today. It can be used, that, like you'll see fish meal on a, on a pet food label. The fish meal, you've got to ask, because the fish meal by the supplier might be preserved with the toxic one. So he told me, and they used to add it directly to pet food. And he said to extend the shelf life. This was 30 years ago, okay? I, I didn't even really know what shelf life was. And, but I called this pet food company. This was my first phone call to a pet food company. And I said, how long will your food stay fresh? And they very proudly told me 25 years. Ooh. Yeah. So those words and my dog dying were seared in my brain. It changed my life. That changed Is that when you started chasing the ingredients in <laughs> well, pet foods? My, that vet gave me textbooks from vet school. This was before the internet. This what was wonderful vet. I'm really dating myself. <laughs> yeah, here um, I and and then when the internet came out, you can look up papers, you know, and then I started right. going to regulatory meetings and, you know, one thing led to another. But, um, you know, now we can access that information. It's it's a little time consuming and it's a, you know, your brain, you think your brain's going to explode. Oh, yeah. Scientific paper. But take your time. Read them. Yes. You know, it, it, your brain also explodes when you read the law. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And the laws are all hidden from pet owners. They, they are all absolutely hidden. You can look up laws on your food, but you cannot look up laws on pet foods. Um, they are for sale only. Why? For sale only. These, this is the book. Oh my goodness. Look how thick it is. It's a very thick okay. book. It's and a very you have thick to book. Buy it from AFCO. Okay, I want one. Uh huh. I want to read on this stuff. Well, oh, oh my you, you, goodness. And it, go to an AFCO meeting. Join me at an AFCO meeting. The next one will be in Baltimore in August. August, Baltimore. Yeah. I don't know. That, I don't know if we can travel, but we would <laughs> yeah, love to. We'll, I was, we'll was going to ask, can how yeah. can people help you get these laws changed? Yes. What can they do to support you? Well, I'll, I'll write posts ever so often and ask for pet owners to write the FDA or write whoever. Mm -hmm. You know, so those kind of things we absolutely do help. Yeah. And I and I'll say with products, you know, I, I told you I got down the rabbit hole with um, pet products. We were looking for like calming sprays and things to clean up urine and all that stuff. They don't even have to tell you everything that's on it. Like they, they can just say cleaning agents or preservatives. But if you Google and because I'm not a rocket scientist, folks, I just Googled what preservatives are in blah, blah, blah. And I found it. And then, of course, we don't speak this language, but no problem. Mr. Google does. So I just sat and typed that's in one right. at a time. And, <laughs> and, I, and it yeah. was always, is safe for cats? And yeah. then I, and I just kept replacing that word with the next word. And yeah. I came up with so many things that are banned by the EW, things that are not allowed to be used in human products. Yeah. And, and some of them are sprays like you put on your cat. And I'm like, do they think the cats live alone? 
I mean, if they're really only going to be concerned about yeah. humans, peachy. But the humans are still getting this on them. Being right. exposed, right. Yeah. I worry about people with babies and children, too. Yeah, same difference. So yeah. many products had reproductive issues with them. Reproductive toxicity. Mm -hmm. I got an 18-year-old son. I want to be a grandma some more. I want more. I mean, <laughs> I don't want... It's, it's petrifying. I know. It is. But, yeah. you know, petrifying, so petrifying, yeah. that's good, huh? Didn't even do that on purpose, but yeah, you know, take the things that you got and look up. And if it says something innocuous, like preservatives, you know, we use a product that the preservative is grapeseed extract. So preservative send doesn't necessarily them, mean send bad. The company an email and, and like with pet foods, ask them if all ingredients are human grade uh -huh. slash human edible. Okay. We need to ask that and of uh, a also, couple brands we know. Uh huh. Yeah, and and also, and what what a lot of them will do, their response will be, "Oh, all of our ingredients come from USDA facilities." Well, guess what? Condemned meats come oh. from USDA, USDA facilities. facilities. So that was oh. what you asked. You specifically asked. Are the ingredients in your pet food human grade? That's all smokes. They food. they try to pull a fast one on you. That's when you move on to the next pet food. Is There's this problem? Is this an international problem, Susan, or is this just in the United States? Yes. Oh no, it, it's yeah, it's all over. over. Yeah, and and with not but having there to are label good it. companies. There I'm sure. I'm that. sure. Yes. I'm we used sure. to think we were safe looking for USA made and stuff. Instead but of no. ordering things online, like whenever I give speeches or presentations to groups, I encourage them to go support a local pet store. That's so important. Support yes. a local business in your community. If they don't have a food that you would like to buy or try, Ask them to order it for you. And yes. so many of these independent pet food stores know the the firstborn child's name of the owner of the company. They know all these details about where they source their ingredients. Some independent pet food stores do so much homework for wow. us. Yes. So go yes. support those people. To know it's a, yes. Yeah, yes. It's really important. A lot of people did. There was a lady had a vendor booth at the Cat Fanciers Expo that I went to a couple of weeks ago, and she made her own, dried her own. I bought a big thing of sliced chicken hearts uh, for the cat. That's that where you got those. those. That's where I got them from. Yes, she just does her own little thing in her own little shop, and and what she does for her cats, then she makes extra and sells. So, yeah, it's going to be a big challenge for us, Linda, with twenty seven cats. Are we up for it? You I think we're up it. for it. You know what? <laughs> what is the alternative? I know. I love I know. my babies. What's when you, the alternative? When you said that about your dog and like overnight getting cancer, I thought of my cat, Lovey. Overnight, she got a bump. Or he got a bump on the leg and it was cancer. Yeah. And my vet took yeah. it off. And then just a couple of weeks later, her whole body. Fast. I keep yeah. saying oh, her, but had, he was a he. Yes. Yeah. He was just, yeah. He was a mess. Yeah. And we yeah. always say, is it the food? What is it? Well. We saw it, that Rita it very owned a, well could have contributed. The food I really very yeah. Well contributed. yeah. Rita owned a cats only pet sitting Just company. For cats. And the rate years. of cat yeah, 17 years. The rate of cats getting cancer, asthma. I we we're doing asthma inhalers all over the place. Yeah, and, asthma. And Amazing. having problems with organs needing sub Q and diabetes and this thyroid is issues. Happening. Thyroid issues thyroid, are yes. rampant with cats. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. this is not happening. Cats in nature don't go diabetic. Yeah. As so far as we know, I would think not. something. Yeah. There's yeah. no, yeah. There's no studies of. Yeah. I don't think they have. Fates, I don't but, think they have type one diabetes. Like we Exactly. Know. Yes. Yeah. You just don't see that. Ugh. They have plenty of other dangers, but yeah, exactly. So there, it's something we're doing between there and here. And seems quite obvious that, yeah. Susan, will you come back and Absolutely. tell us, especially when you hear back from them, um, and what yes. are some next steps that we can do as pet lovers and pet owners to help make yes. this better? Absolutely. Yes. Anytime you got anything going on, 
The door is always <laughs> open. Keep that link. Just schedule yourself. Oh, good. Susan's coming. <laughs> right? You don't even have to ask. We need to talk. We do. We do. We yes. do. Yes. yes, 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 for sure. And everybody especially, needs to hear it. Especially as behaviorists, you know, and people come to us and ask us about food and treats and supplements. And, you know, we need to know so we can yeah. do better. Yeah. Yes. Well, I know we went over, uh, but that's fine. I, we might we'll be turn able it to into a two parter. We <laughs> might be able to. I'll ask Mark. Uh, <laughs> if so, we need to do another intro. Yes, but we whatever. Will. Um, we would love to have you back. This has yes. been so enlightening. I know Linda and I are both chomping at the bit to get into our kitchens now. Like I want a clear <laughs> schedule gonna, so I can go shopping for chicken wings. And- <laughs> We should talk about this on our links, and then the next time we talk, yes, you know what my questions. Oh, you're gonna yes. hear it. Yes, okay. you got it. You got it. You Absolutely. Got it. Definitely. Well, Linda, thank you for finding Susan. This was a find, and Susan, <laughs> I can't tell you how much we appreciate you being oh, on no our problem. show and enlightening us. Uh, truthaboutpetfood.com. Uh, we will include some other links to things when we post this uh, video on our YouTube. Yes. And we do want to have you back. But in the meanwhile, yes, we have to, I also have to thank Mark. Uh, Mark Winter gave us this spot on Pet Life Radio. And we so appreciate the ability to learn these things, not just for ourselves, but for our listeners. And just remember, everybody, every day is Catter Day. So we'll see you next time. <laughs>